in Yangshan on the east side of China. It's these massive stones that are being carved from the ground. They're still connected to the bedrock. But there's three main pieces to this, what they say is a stele. And uh, this thing is freaking massive. If this was a finished statue, it would weigh up to 31,167 tons. Nestled near Nanjing, China, the Yangshan Quarry is an archeological site of monumental historical significance, primarily due to an ambitious yet unfinished project initiated by the Yongle Emperor. This grand undertaking aimed to create a colossal stele in memory of his father, the Hongwu Emperor, founder of the Ming Dynasty. The Yongle Emperor, who reigned from 1402 to 1424, was renowned for his grand architectural and cultural visions, which included not only the Forbidden City, but also this massive stele project. He changed the capital of China from Nanjing to Beijing in 15 years, building the Forbidden City of China. The quarry was specifically commissioned by the Yongle Emperor as a filial tribute to honor his father. This act was not just about familial respect, but also about legitimizing his rule and connecting his achievements to the dynasty's founder, enhancing the continuity and legitimacy of his own reign. The construction of such a monument was also a display of imperial power and the capabilities of Ming Dynasty engineering. You know, those people that were using machines somehow, that was what I first thought. It was intended to be a lasting symbol of the dynasty's strength and the emperor's devotion. The primary goal of the Yangshan Quarry was to extract stone of unprecedented size and scale. The stele for the Hongwu Emperor was to stand as the largest of its kind ever created, symbolizing the immense power and enduring legacy of the Ming Dynasty. Such a project required not just vast resources, but also a workforce capable of managing the logistical challenges posed by the stone's enormous dimensions. In Imperial China, erecting steles was a deeply cultural act, often associated with honoring divine or royal entities. The Yongle Emperor's project linked him with the divine mandate, ascribing almost celestial reverence to his ancestors and himself, reinforcing his rule as divinely sanctioned. The project was designed to be composed of three grand pieces, the base, the body, and the crown. The base was intended to support the enormous weight of the stele, acting both as a physical and symbolic foundation. Giant, uh, you know, pieces of rocks, they are all gone. The main portion, or the body of the stele, was planned to be intricately engraved with inscriptions praising the Hongwu Emperor, detailing his accomplishments and virtues. The topmost segment, the crown, was to be elaborately decorated possibly with dragon motifs or other imperial symbols, embodying the celestial authority of the emperor. The body of the stele itself was planned to exceed 30 meters in length, 13 meters wide, and 10 meters thick, weighing approximately 16,000 and 250 metric tons. This stone would have been one of the largest ever carved by human hands. To put it in perspective, this single block of stone weighs as much as about 2,500 adult African elephants, showcasing the monumental ambition of ancient Chinese engineering. Another comparison highlights the scale further. The length of the stele's body was almost as long as the wingspan of a Boeing 747 airplane. This comparison underscores not only the immense size, but also the bold engineering ambitions of the Ming Dynasty paralleling the monumental constructions of other ancient civilizations like the Egyptians and Romans. The project at the Yangshan Quarry faced insurmountable logistical nightmares, leading to its eventual abandonment after the Yongle Emperor's death. The primary challenge was transporting the immense stone the 10 kilometers to the Ming Xiaoling Mausoleum. Despite the large labor force and advanced engineering of the time, the task proved beyond the capabilities of the era's transportation technologies. Investigations have unearthed a variety of traditional tools used at the Yangshan Quarry, including chisels, hammers, and levers. These tools, crafted from iron, were used in a meticulously organized manner to extract and shape the gargantuan stones. Complementing these tools were sophisticated techniques, 
For instance, workers likely employed a method known as fire setting, which involved heating the rock surface with fire and then dousing it with cold water to create thermal shock and crack the stone. Such methods highlight the ingenuity of the labourers in overcoming the challenges posed by the quarry's massive scale. The layout of the Yangshan Quarry revealed much about the organisation of labour and resources. Large teams of workers were coordinated in a way that suggests a highly structured approach, possibly under the supervision of Imperial engineers. This organisation was essential for the execution of such a monumental project. The coordination and resource management at the site were crucial in attempting to bring the Yongle Emperor's grand vision to life, even though the project ultimately proved too ambitious to complete. The Yangshan Quarry is a site of technological marvels, where advanced techniques and intriguing speculations abound. The enormous stones quarried here, some of the largest ever in human history, show a level of precision in cutting and shaping that suggests extremely advanced methods. Given the size and weight of the stones, over 16,250 metric tons for just the main body of the stelly, standard techniques of the time would likely have been insufficient. Historians and archaeologists speculate that ancient Chinese engineers might have utilized now lost techniques to facilitate their monumental tasks. It was really laborious, the job of many laborious, industrious and endless Chinese people there. These could have included specialized cutting tools, measurement systems for exact angles and flat surfaces, and unique methods for splitting stone from rock beds without causing it to crack entirely. The precision with which these stones were quarried and shaped indicates a sophisticated integration of various fields of knowledge, including geometry, physics, and material science, highlighting a highly developed technological culture. Comparisons with Roman engineering further illuminate the ingenuity at Yangshan. Roman engineers revolutionized construction with hydraulic cement and the extensive use of arches, vaults, and domes enabling them to build enduring structures like the Pantheon and the aqueducts. They mastered the use of available resources and adapted their engineering solutions to diverse conditions across their vast empire. Similarly, the engineers at Yangshan may have developed unique methods for managing the quarrying of such massive stones. This might have involved intricate lever systems to maximize mechanical advantage or even early forms of cranes powered by large human teams or animals. Both civilizations demonstrated an understanding of leverage and load distribution. Roman cranes and capstans were used for lifting heavy weights, while similar principles could have been applied in Yangshan for moving large stone blocks. One hypothesized technique that might have been used at Yangshan is the use of water to aid in transporting these massive stones. By creating a series of canals and using buoyancy, the engineers could have significantly reduced the effective weight of the stones, making them easier to manoeuvre over large distances. The timing of the quarry work might have been strategically planned around the seasons. For instance, the engineers could have taken advantage of frozen ground during winter to move heavy stones more easily, a technique seen in other historical contexts such as the transport of large stones for medieval cathedrals in Europe. Additionally, large wooden structures and complex systems of ropes and pulleys could have played a crucial role in lifting and setting stones. The durability and flexibility of bamboo, widely available in China, would have been particularly useful for creating temporary frameworks and scaffolding. In traditional Chinese culture, the spiritual world often intertwines with the physical, and many ancient construction projects are shrouded in tales of omens and divine messages. At Yangshan, local legends suggest that the project to erect the massive stele was halted by supernatural forces. Stories persist that strange and ominous signs appeared during the quarrying, which local workers and officials interpreted as warnings from the heavens. These signs dissuaded them from continuing the project, fearing disaster or bad luck. These tales might be symbolic expressions of the workers' fears and the practical difficulties they faced, projected onto supernatural explanations. 
This is a common cultural phenomenon throughout human history when people encounter seemingly insurmountable challenges. The idea of supernatural interference provided a culturally acceptable explanation for the project's abandonment, reflecting the deep-seated beliefs of the time. Another intriguing theory posits that the layout and orientation of the quarry and the stele were deliberately aligned with celestial bodies or important astronomical events. This draws parallels to other ancient sites like Stonehenge in England or the Pyramids of Giza in Egypt, known for their significant astronomical alignments used for religious, ceremonial or calendar marking purposes.